actually not a realtor at heart. I am a tech guy who got into real estate. So that's my background. I'm a broker in four states. I have a securities license and I do residential and commercial. Hi, I'm Rick Bossel with uh, Keller Williams here in Arlington. Um, been at real estate for about six years now. Before that, I had an IT background. And I'm getting into all kinds of social media, a little bit of LinkedIn, and Facebook. Starting to get on Twitter too, so a little bit of everything. All right, and that's Pam O'Brien. I'm the team leader for the Keller Williams in Arlington, and I'm very pleased that we can have such a nice, broad group of people all together, and I very much appreciate y'all showing up. So, just to get us started, um, what is social media? Who wants to take that one? What is social media? Because I'm sure that when some of you saw the flyer saying using social media in real estate, you went, oh, okay, I think I sort of know what that is, but I don't. described as being the fourth generation of computing. computing. In the 70s you had mainframe computing, in the 80s you had PCs that kind of decentralized everything. In the 90s the internet came along and now the fourth wave is social media. So it's, it's big. Right now there's, uh, I think there's 150 million people on Facebook already. It's grown by you know, millions of people. So if I can actually answer this question by asking a question of all of you, which is just to kind of understand the composition of the audience. I'd love to know a couple things. So if you can raise your hands, how many of you blog for your real estate practice specifically? So what is that, about a third of the room? And how many of you Twitter, either for real estate or personally? One, two, three, four, five, six. So blogging, uh, Twittering, do any of you use YouTube? So about, so it, 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 it looks like most of you blog, some use YouTube, and a few of you Twitter. So the majority of you in this room that I imagine are very curious about this phenomenon and wondering how you can apply it to your businesses and your lives. And what I would tell you is that trying to figure out how to use social media in a vacuum is like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. So let me kind of reframe the question. In my mind, the value of social media is that it exposes the content of an organization to the people that want to see it. So when I think of social media, I don't think of social media, I think of exposing content. And I'll talk a lot today personally, my view about why exposing content is such a big deal and is so underrated. But just think that the people who want to see your, your expertise can see it when they're making a, 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 a purchasing decision, but also when they're choosing what realtor they want to use. The content is there at the right moment, and social media is the vehicle through which it's being delivered. Let me follow up on that. How many people are on Facebook here? Okay, is there anybody that's not yet? That's been afraid? Oh, wow, okay, good. So here's our, our going to be our challenge, is that you have to go back at the end of today. Just go sign up. It's really not scary. It's very, it's free. It's easy. Um, I've even done it. It's okay. So, um, any other social media forum that anybody else is using that we haven't mentioned yet, or the, something that you see as a social media forum that we haven't mentioned? <laughs> LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn, I think our consensus has been on LinkedIn that it's kind of been superseded. That it was the business networking forum for a while, but it's really been surpassed now that Facebook has, has come up and kind of taken that away. I see that Daniel's got a comment on that already. No, I was actually going to ask about another one that I just started using for really progressive types. Is, is, is anybody using Ping FM? Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about Ping FM too. Also, um, Flickr, which is more for sharing photos, but that's also another way that you can reach out in the community if you're taking pictures of uh, you know, people's house developments or walk through the downtown area. And, and also, uh, regular old school instant messaging.
instant messaging, asking him a question at the exact same time that I'm chatting with my client, and then there's a closing question to see what, what date there is my closing companies on instant messaging. So I've got three windows open and people simultaneously having conversations and getting everything done within a matter of seconds as opposed to sending an email, waiting for the person to actually check their email and, uh, or make a phone call and leave a voicemail. In a matter of seconds, it's all done via instant messaging. And you know, whenever I have a, an idea for a site or, or a page design, there's always someone up even at 3 a.m. that I can send an instant message to say, hey, can you check this out? And I get instant feedback. So I use that as a, a social you know, work environment. You just have to make sure you don't get ter carried away and use it as just wasteless chatting. Then it's not effective, but you can actually use it as a business tool. And entire offices can actually use it as a virtual office space by making all their agents uh, have instant messaging so you know when the agent has been in front of their computer and has touched their keyboard in the last five minutes. It's actually set up so it knows whether you're away or online right now. And it's just another way rather than being in an office and someone walk, walks past your your office and you might not have called them, might not have emailed them, you might have been like, hey, I've got a question for you. It's kind of like that over instant messaging. Um, and there's also some etiquettes that you have to slowly learn, such as don't expect a response in the middle of the conversation back and forth, they might just fall off and be gone for seven minutes. It's just a different type of medium that you have to get used to. And there's some shortcuts like OTP, on the phone, which is what I use for anything. Like I need to go you know, get some snacks in the other room. Uh, I just say OTP because it's the shortest way of saying, hey, give me a moment. So uh, instant messaging, I use a lot. I don't use instant messaging on my cell phone. I kind of do the line, line there. I don't like getting beeped every second. I know that one of the questions that I had, and I'm sure that most of you are also wondering, how much time does this take? So is this a, ta a time saver or a time killer? How much time did you spend prospecting for business a day? The three hours a day. Okay. So that's how I prospect for business. Yes. Very good. Okay, so in your book, it's a time saver. Think of it. Yeah, well, I think uh, it depends. You know, like, uh, actually saved a lot of time, even though you put time to blog. It's the same thing about prospecting, but you don't know who is reading the blog, and you don't know who's going to send something to you. So you're reaching out to some people who would, you would not have the time was, would have the chance to. So it's, it's like a nasty mail, but at your, at their convenience. I was going to say, say the same thing. It could be a time waster or a time saver. Uh, by blogging, you can reach out to a number of people all at once. I know some people get carried away on Facebook and waste a lot of time just on nonsense chat. I think for the most part, you can save a lot of time. So to answer that question, let me give you two secret tools that I use that are public, but I would imagine a lot of you don't use them, that I am willing to bet would be incredible time savers in your lives. Let me ask you, who in this room in the past month has gone to visit a client to get signatures on a contract. How many of you have actually physically traveled to see a client? So for those of you raising your hands, I haven't physically gone to get signatures from a client in four years. And we also don't have a fax machine in our office, if you can believe that. We have a scanner. So whenever something comes in, we scan it, and we use an e-fax type program called Max Email. So it's M-A-X-E-M-A-I-L.com. When I need to send a fax, I actually send an email. How many of you do this? You actually send faxes through email. So that half the room? Actually, most of you do. So Max Email is great. Couple that with electronic signatures. When I first go to see a client, or even just via email, I have them sign a sheet of paper that says that we have the right to stamp their signatures onto a contract. We then email it to them to approve. They send us back an email approving the contract where we have stamped their signatures so we have something in writing linking the signature to the email address and then we send the contract off. So we use a combination of electronic signatures and max email and we don't need a fax machine don't need to actually go see clients. And I just laugh when an agent says, oh, my client's out of town. I can't get signatures until you know, a week from now. I, you know, we've had clients literally on the beach in Tahiti approving 
star stamped contracts by other blackberries on the beach. So that's one uh, approach that we use. The second is call wave. Who in this room uses call wave? Okay, so Google Voice has just come out with a voicemail to email transcription service. The predecessor was call wave, which is C-A-L-L-W-A-V-E.com. I haven't listened to a voicemail in two years. I read my voicemail. When somebody leaves me a message, it gets transcribed into text and emailed to me. So literally, if you want to try this, you can try right now calling my number and leaving a message, and it will be transcribed into text, and then I'll show it to you guys after the meeting. So my number is 202-250-3846. Two zero two two five zero three eight four six. Sometime in the next hour, try leaving me a message, and I'll show you what it looks like by email. So when I get that email voicemail, the audio is attached. So if it didn't transcribe correctly, then I can listen to the audio. But usually, I just read the voicemail and I can forward it along to an agent who actually has to deal with the issue. So call wave and electronic signatures slash max email are two real big time savings. Just on the topic of blogs really fast, because I want to stop talking, but uh, you get three main benefits from blogging, as far as I'm concerned. One is that you can, you don't have to answer the question a thousand times that Craig's saying. I always say that Henry Ford would love blogs because it's, it's like an assembly line, right? You write it once, you use it a thousand times. The second major benefit that you get is that Google rewards you very richly for having unique content. Google is thirsty for unique content. If you want to, here at the top of Google results for a certain search, you need to be blogging, you need to be blogging a lot. You probably have to write 300 blog postings, I would guess, to become a subject matter expert in Google's eyes so that it will return you in searches. The third, more important benefit that you get than the other two is that clients know that you know your stuff. And so it's just like referrals. Literally, imagine you're getting cold, cold leads come in that are as warm as referrals. Hey, Daniel, I saw your low offer video, and I'm, I know that you know how to do this because you put it in your video. I want to work with you. How often does that happen when you get a cold lead? It happens with blogging. I was just going to expand on that. Um, depending on what topic you're writing about, it can take a lot of posts to get right. If you're writing about local content, you know, if you're writing about neighborhoods or things like that, you could be at the top of search rankings after one post if it's something that there's not a lot of content about. But the, that definitely is true. You know, you write it once. I've got one on short sales that I've used exactly the same way you do. I mean, I wasn't on business street, but clients are good. But the same, you know, there, that was a post that I wrote a year ago, and it's, I'm still using it, and it just makes it easier. 
audience that wants to ask a question, or you don't want to raise your hand, you can just Twitter the question, and it will show up here as long as you put that pound SOCDA, that's the search key that's making all the posts show up here, right? So again, it's about exposing content. This content that's happening in this room right now is being captured on Twitter. It will be here forever. People who are searching a year from now for the word social media might find these pieces of content and can learn from them. We're also recording this video I was just going to say, you, you don't have to use all types of social media. I mean, not everybody is cut out to be a blogger. I mean, there's writing skills that are involved. Not everybody enjoys writing. So that's not necessarily going to work for everybody. Just as Twitter doesn't always appeal to everyone, Facebook doesn't work for other people. So you sort of have to decide where you want to be. And while you're there, the audience that you have around you is, is how you decide who you're going to you know, ask for advice. You know, I'll go over to Twitter and say, hey, I just redesigned my blog. How does this look? And I'll get feedback from there. Or I might put it out on Facebook. It's just a matter of who you're trying to reach. I probably have more local people, you know, potential clients that I'm connected with on Facebook than I do on Twitter. There are other people that I'm friends with in the business that would say the exact opposite. So, you know, sort of uh, your mileage may vary as opposed to what your goals are. So these are very personal decisions, and everyone's going to make them differently. But again, I go back to exposing content. Just replete, just replace, you don't have to be on social media with, you don't have to be exposing content. The more content and expertise you choose to expose to the world, the more people you'll have coming to you asking you for your services. And it's just a personal choice. I, have, I set up profiles on Facebook, so I have different types of friends. I've got a professional list, a family list, a friends list. Facebook takes care of the rest. Uh, on Twitter, I've got different Twitter accounts. So twitter.com slash Drodeo is uh, my personal one. We have twitter.com slash Drodeo Home Feed. That is actually Twittering every new listing that comes on the market. You can check that one out. Uh, we, so I, I just, I've set up different Twitter accounts. I would recommend, even if you're not going to use Twitter, go to twitter.com. It takes 20 seconds. Grab the domain, twitter.com slash your name, even if you're not going to use it. I think it's going to be a lot like domain names were, where they, the, the good ones go fast. So, you know, you could grab 20 if you wanted to. 
twitter.com slash Arlington VA Homes. Whatever you wanted to do. It doesn't hurt, it's free, it takes 20 seconds to do it. Go get your piece of the Twitter pie so you can use it later. I just got a message from Fairfax saying that my uh, posting was working. So I was like, I wasn't able to see it up there, so I said, is this thing on? And someone in, Fair in Fairfax replied, said, yeah, yeah, it's working. So. Another question that I had Somebody told me they got it. They, they're really getting 
information, how can I get through some of this stuff before I make my decision on who I'm going to work with. So it really is all demographics. You all agree on that? Uh, another thing, if, if you don't think that you're a writer, you have to find your own voice, find your own system. You can also use YouTube. You can grab any of these $150 cameras, put them in the lowest video mode, and talk. Um, post that on YouTube. Another thing you can do is, if you, if you think you don't know how to write a blog well, yet you write long, long emails. The other day, someone wrote me a question about uh, Arlington, the market in Arlington, I was, and he, at the end said, and feel free to post this. So what I did is, instead of emailing him back, I took all of his questions and answered them, and then posted it to a blog called questions.franklyrealty.com, which is a typical question of the day, and that is content. So rather than just helping that one person, it's helping many people. It's helping many people, Google finds it, future clients can see what a typical answer would be if they were to ask me a question, and it did take one second, well maybe one minute longer, because I had to copy and paste it, but I didn't spend any more time on it. So even if you're just, if you don't think you have anything to blog about, just take your actual emails and post those somewhere. Um, obviously change the information, change the locations, change the city if, if need be, if you want to kind of do things anonymously. But also grab a video camera. I uh, attach one of these video cameras to my steering wheel and I have a realestatecam.com. So if I'm doing a 15 minute drive somewhere and I've got something to talk about and I want to write about it but it's been three weeks on my to-do list, then you just, I just get it done with on, on the video. And I'm very casual about it. Sometimes I've got funny t-shirts that say I make things up and, and stuff like that. So it's a different audience. Initially, people might say, well, who's, gonna, who's going to respect someone who's wearing a t-shirt and jeans and hasn't shaved? But if they actually listen to your content, they're like, wow, he's wearing a t-shirt and jeans and he's saying something good. If he was wearing a suit and saying something good, I might not trust him. But since he's not trying to be all formal, it actually can make it more you know, believable. I actually. Just to, to second that point, you don't have to be professional about this. In fact, I, I completely agree with Frank that detracts from it. People want to see you in your you know your home office espousing knowledge. I mean, it just feels so real. They you know it's it's like you get the benefit of being written up in the Washington Post by just by doing a YouTube video, literally. And then to just show you an extreme of of exposing content, which is my big theme here, right? What, what I'll sometimes do is I will wear a lapel microphone when I go out with clients, and I will bring just a small, you know, Olympus, you know, uh, audio recorder, and I'll, I'll plug that into the mic, and I will ask the client, do you mind if I record our conversation today? And if they don't mind, and some clients, you know, I wouldn't even ask because I know they would mind, but some clients are just really cool about it. Because I say, look, there's so many other clients out there that would love to just tag along while I show you homes today. So I will actually record the two hours that I spend with that client, and then I will have it transcribed for a dollar a minute into text, because Google cannot index that audio yet. And then I'll post the audio on my blog and the text below it, and I get, I get the benefits of the blogging, and I'm exposing the content. So people can listen to that audio, and Google spiders the content, and you know, it's cost me 60 bucks. Here's, a, uh, here's the real estate cam, you can play it. Um, and I sometimes have like hidden messages in there, a little pop up, just trying to make it fun. Um, everyone's gonna do something a little bit differently. This, uh, the shirt is actually a little bit of a riddle. You might be able to figure it out. Um, it says, uh, I don't give a, and it's uh, a rat beating the donkey. So, um, so that's, you know, I just talked for, some people have, I, I got the idea from Ian Watts, a guy in uh, Canada, and he does short little one minute, uh, super hyped up on caffeine, uh, one minute little clips. I do seven, eight minute things talking about what the latest is on bank bidding wars, how I just saw that there was you know, 17 offers on a bank property, and it's content that stays up there forever and gets you know, uh, a few hundred views, and it's, <laughs> it's fun.
Frank mentioned a great way to get topic for a blog. You know, a client asks you a question, you just you know, take a long email answer and just post it on your blog. And in case you don't have clients asking questions, go to, uh, you just go to Truly and they have a Q&A section there. And, you know, just uh, answer some of those questions or take one of those. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Truly, you can go to Truly and you'll have 50 questions right there. Answer them, your name will go up, uh, and you'll get ranked according to how well you answer the question. And then you take that question. intimidated about all this in this room, just out of curiosity. So like a third of you. So it's, hey, it's okay. And just, you know, start with something really simple. Maybe we can all just say what we think are really simple ways to start. <coughs> Activebrain.com is a great community to start blogging on. The blog is basically pre-set up for you. So just start writing there. Go to Twitter and just start writing. Or because all you're doing is exposing your own content. You are the expert of your domain. You have it in your head. You just have to somehow get it out to the world. That's all you're doing. This is a tool that you're using. For those of you who are more advanced, Ping FM, which I just started using, I love, is basically an aggregator of all these different uh, you know, blogs and Twitters. So you just go to Ping FM and you set up accounts for Facebook and Twitter. And so it's ping.fm, P-I-N-G.fm. And then you can write one thing on Ping FM, and it shows up across all the different medium. medium. Yeah, yeah, so uh, that's for those of you who are already down this path. Daniel, how, how did you learn to, to link all of this stuff together, like the videos and your, and your voice? And well, so the reason I told you at the start of this uh, panel that I wasn't a realtor, that I was a tech guy who's playing realtor, is because honestly, my expertise isn't in your world. Your world is, is doing contracts and being realtors, right? I'm really a tech guy. So for me, this technology part is easy. It's not necessarily going to be as easy for you. But just start with really simple things and you'll find yourself getting sucked in, I guarantee it. Um, I just want to say one thing. I know uh, if you want to do something, stats, you know, statistics, uh, make sure that you quote the source because that's very important. And I've seen realtors up there just getting somebody's content and then creating stories. You, in the blogosphere, you got to
talk all about that, and Google will find that stuff, and that's something that you can start today. social media, that's just the tool, it's exposing content, if you can expose it via Craigslist, or if you can expose it via, on the actual for sale sign, putting a writer that says 1234mainstreet.com, so that when the husband and wife are driving by and want to get inside, but they don't have a realtor yet, they can just go online and see 50 pictures of the interior, you know, so it's just think about different ways that you're exposing content, you could put that listing on Twitter, you could put it through, you know, on Ping FM, through all these different avenues, but you're just exposing that content to a wider percentage of people. That's all you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, I want to add to that. Actually, Heather is right, because you can't put stuff on their throat. Uh, people will just leave you. Uh, this is a different world, and I think social media is a platform 
actually what they call the user-generated content. Uh, basically, they pick and choose they want what they want to read. But in, in a way, if you coordinate your Twitter with your Facebook, uh, I use my Facebook with my friends so they can actually see I'm actually working in real estate. Because some, a lot of times, like, oh, you're a realtor? You're still in real estate? Really? You, you don't have to tell them. They can pick and choose. You know, they see it all the time. Uh, video, I heard Realtor.com saying that one tenth of one percent of their listings have video on them, and that was a video example that uh, Kathy right here made, and it's all free. It's grabbing one of these cameras and walking through the property, and you can put those videos on Craigslist when you advertise. You cannot put them in the public for Marks and MRS, but you can put uh, ask your agent for the video tour, and then put in the Realtor remarks, and then uh, the realtor might want to save, you know, a half an hour drive and just be like, here, take a, take a look at this video. Do we want to go see it or not? And that's just easy, free, no-brainer stuff.
was just going to say about interacting uh, online and the information that you put out there. Keep in mind that your online interaction should be no different than when you're talking to somebody face to face, which just happens to be a computer in between. So don't share anything online that you wouldn't share when you're talking with somebody with any potential client in person. I think that's probably a good guideline. And as far as all communication goes, when you're emailing with people or on Twitter, don't let your brain fall out of your head as when you go online. You're talking to people the exact same. Starting at Active Brain, I think, is probably a great jumping off point. That's where I got started. You can find, um, go in there and search, and you can find answers to any questions about how to get started on blogging. And you'll find, too, that the community of people that have already gotten started are generally pretty helpful to help you figure out how to get underway because we all ask those questions at the beginning, too. They just, uh, they just started charging, by the way, and Active Brain was free. And that was, what, 20, 30 bucks a month? supposed to be running some promotions soon, uh, so just keep that, keep that in mind. Uh, but the, one of the other benefits of Active Brain is that there's a point system. You get five or ten points every time you post a comment on somebody else's blog post. So it's very interactive, and it's a great way to make your, your blog more active. There's nothing worse than putting uh, a blog post out there, and your tracker said that 100 people came to it, but you have zero comments. So the next visitor that comes thinks that you know no one's reading it, so why am I going to read this? Post on Active Brain, you will get uh, several comments. And I had one appraiser, I bugged him. He finally put, I found him because he, put, he did a one paragraph thing on, on this one community. I contacted him, he said, You know what? Four people have contacted me because of that one paragraph about this community that I wrote about uh, a year ago. Maybe I should do some more stuff. I bugged him, he wrote a full thing about 10 things for realtors not to do in listings, and he got 92 comments when he woke up in the morning. It's not normally like that, so don't be expecting that stuff. But he just uh, just started, got 82 comments, and when a, an actual consumer, or someone considering hiring him, goes to that page and sees the 85 people comment on this thing, it makes him look good. Uh, another great site everybody should check out is the Real Estate Tomato. They, they're a company out of California, and they make uh, blogs for realtors, and there's just tons of information on what great about how advice for real estate bloggers and also plenty of examples of successful bloggers all across the country. They also do training classes too if you, if you 
one year that round don't build go on for you. And it costs a few thousand dollars, but tons of free info on that. To re re-emphasize what Heather said, blogging locally and even micro locally, like we're talking about community names, is really, 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 really effective. I know Heather does it, and I know it's me and Tony do it also. I don't do it, but if I were um, you know, specializing in Hiddenbrook in Herndon, Virginia, or Ashburn, I certainly would be, and I recommend it. If you know a lot about a certain area, you know, call the HOA and ask them, are people not paying their HOA dues because of a lot of foreclosures? Or you know, just put that kind of real content onto a blog that's very specific with lots of keywords of that community, and I guarantee you will get warm, interested buyer leads off of it. If you want to use uh, like local, I mean local expert, but not realtor, um, you can check the jpland.com. She's a Washington reporter. Um, she's actually working in a uh, computer or something, but she has this blog that chronicles the development in Southeast. It's very uh, rich in information. <laughs> JD Land. just put a, 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 a little promo in for, for the Virginia Association of Realtors, which has been amazingly progressive from a technological standpoint. If you haven't visited varealtor.com recently, um, it probably hasn't changed yet. They're redoing the site. Uh, they're going to be putting up things like short instructional videos. So Frank can put up a two-minute video about how to take you know pictures in a home using a wide angle camera that we can all learn from. I would really, really uh, beseech you to contact VAR and just tell them how great a job they're doing because it's truly phenomenal uh, for Virginia to be leading the national stage in that standpoint. Um, 
But if you go to search.twitter.com, which is the site that we're on right now, and actually, I'm sorry, go back to search.twitter.com, and let's just search for, um, I don't know what, Alexandria space VA space listing, right? And let's see what comes up. And try and just the word listing without an S. So, on Twitter, we're doing a search to see who's writing postings, who, who's tweeting, right, about these keyword terms. And they say the technology's faster, but it takes longer. So, we'll see if it comes up here. But with RSS, what a user can do is they can do a search for a certain query, and then they can get an RSS feed, which is basically always doing that search for them all the time. So, they can put that RSS feed into their inbox, for example, most mail programs can read RSS. So you'll see here, here are people that are talking about Alexandria, Virginia listings, right? So if I were to hit feed for this query, you can see Drodeo is coming up here, right? So with Drodeo, the way that we're using Twitter is, I just tell a client, hey, if you want to find a home in, in Alexandria, and you just want it to pop into your email when it, it comes up, this is a way to do that search using Twitter. And then they just hit feed for this query, and it allows them to get a direct link that will always send them new results as they pop up. Does that make sense? Does that not make sense to anybody? Why would somebody choose to do that instead of sign up having a really like a confirmation? Traditional, yeah. right, exactly. So, well, so, so the reason that we, we're doing this is just to try using Twitter to see how it works, right? So where you guys might be with, for example, blogging, is where I am with Twitter. How can Twitter be useful? How can I use it to make money in the real estate world? So this is an experiment that we're doing. I, I, I'm curious to see if Google rewards us with SEO results for using Twitter. For example, that's one of the reasons that we're doing it. But it's also just a great, easy search tool. Okay, before we get to the questions and answers, I just wanted to mention real quick that Brian Block Fire from 